Welcome back to the show. Matt Wells is with Coldplay in their London studio where they discovered their new sound and came clean about their Arcade Fire Envy. Pretty much from the moment I sat down to interview the guys from Coldplay, I noticed Chris staring at my shirt for some reason and he was even grilling me about the brand name. Do you, do you go suffer? Um, I have to. Well, you think I had to say yes and not wear a, a, this type of shirt? I think you have to say yes if you wear a snowboard shirt. Yeah. What if I skate? Oh, a, snow, a snowboard? Oh, that's fine then, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I did manage to get the conversation back on track, sort of, and eventually we did start talking about the making of a new album. This is the bakery, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the bakery, yeah. We're, there's no bread, so there's no cookies or anything. Well, not yet. Right, but it's coming? Well, okay. as soon as we finish the interview, that's when we start baking. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about recording live off the floor, because I know you did a lot on this record. Yeah. Ben Harper did it on his latest album. Mm. Wilco always do it. Yeah. It's just like this lost art, right? And I remember hearing Paul McCartney say, the Beatles used to do four songs in a day. He's always going on about the Beatles, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're all great little band, isn't you? <laughs> that you love you? The idea of being just a bunch of guys who can get together and rehearse and be in a band and be in the same room. Mm. Is that important to kind of still keep that when you have all the money to go whatever place in the world and whatever church you want to record in? We actually place? don't. We actually got told yesterday that we're... Over budget? Very in debt. Right. And we, yeah. It's too bad. Well, let's talk about the bakery. Okay. <laughs> but it was a weird thing because we thought, oh, we can go and record anywhere. And then right. our manager told us yesterday, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Dave? This yeah. is Dave. Dude. Dave's fantastic. He's the best manager in the world, but... If you'd put your song in an ad, you could probably go record in that church, though. That's yeah. one of his points. Yeah. <laughs> so the point is, what was the point? Just about being the bakery, being a bunch oh, yeah. of guys who can just play darts and, and make music. I think if we lost that connection, which we started to a little bit, then everything else falls apart. If we think that we're playing well together and then everything else will tend to be good and we it took us six years to realize that the best way to do that was to just to get a little room and have Will and Guy paint it and just play in it you know it's, it's not rocket science but we thought it might be in my place, in my place. is it easy to get into a safety zone though when you're having success and this is like the Coldplay sound and is it hard to kind of get out of that Yeah, it takes about a year to get out of it. <laughs> you can do it. And how do you do it? You do it by banning certain instruments for a while. Right. You do it by telling your singer to sing differently, <laughs> which, as a singer, it's not an easy thing to hear. <laughs> you do it by having producers who break you down to yeah. your very root of your personality. So, they right. remove all those things that you relied upon. Come out upon my seas. You can't talk about how you're the kings of soft rock. That's forbidden. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a process. Process. Do you say process or process? Um, process. Process. Is that correct? Yeah, I yeah. think it is. Okay. Other places we have to say process. <laughs> I'm just checking out the process, process, process. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Look at the stars. Look how they shine for you. So, you have to throw away all those formulas and it's, it's hard because it's tempting sometimes to go hey I've got a great ballad which goes like this <laughs> right you know <laughs> and I mean, then that's, you, that is a number one and then what would you change it to I'll change it to this <laughs> <laughs> I can see the difference see? I, there's no wonder you guys have really grown They've grown I can yeah. see it right here right now well done thanks thanks yes. Did you see the, um, the Daniel Anwar documentary, Here Is What Is? It was the making of his album. Brian Eno was in it because he had clips of when he was over in Morocco working on the U2 record. Yeah. And, and Brian Eno said uh, this great quote or something like, what people don't realize about making music and recording is that you need to take shit and make it really sound beautiful and sound really good. What do you think of that idea? That sounds very much like Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Was a long and dark December. The thing with Brian Eno, especially even when I heard the, the latest Paul Simon record he did, what yeah. Brian Eno does is 
push people to do things they never did before. Mm. And I had to imagine that's why, one of the reasons you wanted to work with them, right? Yeah. Did you feel like you were in a bit of a safety zone with what you were doing and you needed someone to push you out of it? I think so. I think we were in danger of repeating ourselves, really. Or... I think we were in danger of repeating ourselves. Like repeating yourself, saying yeah. it twice. I think we were in danger of repeating ourselves. You don't want to be repeating ourselves. Of <laughs> you don't want to say things again when they've been said once. It just gets redundant. It's redundant. It's yeah. just repetitive. You know, any time we can get with him is amazing because he makes us much, much better. It's, it's a nice feeling. I bet he'd appreciate you saying that. I don't think he would. I don't think no? he would give a fly. <laughs> <laughs> That was basically, you knew his work and you wanted to work with him that way. What about Marcus? Was this because of the Arcade Fire? Yeah. Just because of that? Mm-hmm. And Bjork as well. When you have a producer like Brian Eno, he's kind of the good cop. And you, you do need a bad cop as well to kind of drill you and break you down mentally. So that's what Marcus did for us. So if you love me, won't you let me? It's the hardest role in the world is to be that producer that says, you're just not good enough. Go back in there and do it again. Yeah, that take was no good. You're flat, dude. Yeah, I mean, and he does that. And that, you know, we really salute him for that because it's not an easy thing to do. And you don't get any credit at the end. So I'm saying now, I'm giving Marcus credit for being a total bastard <laughs> and making us work harder. <laughs> And you guys are big fans of the Arcade Fire, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Just okay. They're okay. I think they're probably the 19th best band to come out of Montreal in the last <laughs> six weeks. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, at least. I'd probably, okay. get, I'd probably put them in the top 10. They're okay. I mean, they've made two classic records without seeming to, you know, you know. So they're a lot better than us. So what? <laughs> what can we do about it? That's not true. It is true, man. Everybody's on a, on a level playing field, come on. It is level playing field, but you know what? Arcade Fire, one of those bands that make you turn around and go, okay, take your socks, everybody, and pull them up. <laughs> this band is frighteningly brilliant. Now, I totally forgot what we're talking about. Bionic, bionic legs, right? Bionic legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so did you know that Arcade Fire, four of them have bionic legs? That's why they're so and good. the other three have bionic arms. That's why they're so good. Yeah. That's why I asked you guys first. I was like, you guys are a pretty good band. You must have <laughs> <laughs> You must have that.